everybody, I'm Joey Paul and I'm an indie author and today I'm going to be doing a tag. Specifically, the writers are weird tag, so get ready for some really weird answers. This tag was created by Elliot Brooks and I was tagged by Del Cesaruno, both of which are linked down below. So there are 10 questions, all of which range from weird to the not weird, and I'm just going to jump right in. Number one. Do you have any bizarre internet searches? If so, what's the weirdest one? Yes, I do. I'm a crime writer or I'm a crime mystery writer, so I have some very weird internet searches. I think most writers do, and from watching people do this tag, most people say yes. Uh, the weirdest one, I can't think of any. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of research recently about how long it takes to die from certain wounds and whether or not you can speed that up, which may be weird, but I don't think it's that weird. I think it's just quite common when you're a writer, especially someone writing crime situations and stuff like that. I've done some weird sort of mystery kind of elements searching, um, but I'm probably on a watch list somewhere and I'm okay with that. Number two, do you write people you know and dislike into your story as villains or dumb people to kill off? No. I have written, as in, I have based characters or based named characters after people I know, but that's generally as a homage, not as a way to kill them because they annoy me. I have killed off characters that annoy me, but they're generally not based on people that I know. I don't put that much thought and energy into it. I used to. Some of Tara's first bullies were based on people that had bullied me and therefore the reactions that Tara had to them were very therapeutic to me but I don't do it anymore. Number three, does personal hygiene sometimes come second to writing? No. I want to say that it never has but it did for a while um, but I've gotten better at that and so no it doesn't anymore. Number four, do you go on baby name websites to help you name your characters? Yes I do but generally speaking I'm not going directly to a baby name website I'm typing into Google certain names for certain regions of the world like if I'm naming characters that are not completely British then I want to know what names are common in that area. I especially do it with surnames and that's less baby name websites and more Google searching um, like if I have a character from a certain region of the world, I want to make sure that their surname is one that's commonly used or at least feasible for that area of the world. So yeah, so I'll do it then. Number five, do you have a list of actors and actresses that you would like to play your characters if there was an adaption made? No, not really. I've sort of played around with certain ideas of who I'd like to play who if, say, The Dying Thoughts was made into a movie or a television series. But I don't really follow actors that much to know enough of them to cast them. Like, I kind of know who I want to play Tara's dad, but beyond that, I'm just kind of like, um, guess people that kind of look like them and act like them. But that's the point of acting is you act like them. So yeah, I haven't really given it a lot of thought, mostly because I'm not really, there is someone who watches a lot of TV. And when I do watch TV, it's generally the same people. Um, so yeah. Number six, have you ever stared at a stranger because they look like one of your characters? Actually this has never happened to me. Um, I'm, I'm really boring. Um, I've never sort of like noticed anybody that looks just like Tara or looks just like anybody else of my characters. I know that visibly speaking that you can't imagine a face, like you have to have seen that face at some point in your life whether it's a passerby or not, but I've never seen that face and thought oh they look like no. Never done it. But again, I don't get out much. Number seven, do you torture yourself to help you work through scenes? If so, where do you torture yourself? Yes, I do. And usually here in my office, um, occasionally I'll mutter on the road when we're driving. Um, other times I will do it while we're somewhere and I'll, I'll think of a scene or something and I'm like, oh, how do you how to finish that? Um, and if I do that, then generally speaking, B is there and she will act as kind of like pretending that I'm talking to her because she is a saviour. Um, but yeah. Number eight. While writing, do you make the same expressions your characters are making? Yes, I do. Generally speaking, this is so that I can try and translate what my face looks like onto the page because I'm not very, very good with those kind of descriptions. I think I nail them later on, but when I'm first writing, I'm sort of making all the faces and trying to um, copy that into text. The problem is, is that because I do that, a lot of the time my characters will bite their lip or chew their thumbnail and they'll do it consistently 
several times to the point where when I'm editing it's like yeah they do this too much um, so that has a downside number nine do you ever practice answering interview questions in case you make it big I do and I don't I get a lot of interviews anyway so I have a lot of practice answering interview questions but I've been on the radio I was on the radio first when I first got published in 2005 and that was very nerve-wracking but it was a friend doing the interview so it was, I got the questions and I was able to sort of like work out what I was gonna say so that was good um, but if I make it big I guess I would have the questions in advance again so I'd be able to work out what to say but I don't practice it like sitting here at the computer I don't practice it I probably should but I don't number 10 do you have a soundtrack and or playlist for your book or scenes from your book no I don't I have auditory processing disorder so um, it's really hard for me to listen to music full stop but also listen to music and concentrate on something else so it's something that I don't do I don't have soundtracks for my book I don't have playlists um, I know a lot of writers do and I, I think it's a really good thing but for me music is a distraction that I can't cope with so if I'm listening to something even like if I'm watching YouTube and trying to write or anything else like that I can't do it so I have to turn the noise off while I write I can't do both so yeah that's why I don't have sound playlists or soundtracks or anything else like that I kind of wish I did but it's just something that I'm not capable of doing so I don't really I'm not very good at choosing what music suits what um, my tasty music are varied but from experience I'm not very good at choosing what fits what so it's probably a good thing that I don't do this so there we have it those are my answers to the writers as a weird tag and I am tagging two people Christopher Drost and Moon Petri, both of whom are linked down below. And of course, if you want to do this tag and you haven't already done it, then please do go ahead and consider yourself tagged. So what weird habits do you have that haven't mentioned here? Let me know down in the comments below. So that's all I have time for today. If you want to support my channel, you can comment or subscribe. I post new videos on Thursdays and sometimes I post them on Sundays too. You can find me all over social media and my books are available everywhere. And don't forget to pick up Dying Thoughts 8th Ending and also don't forget to pick up Lights Out, all the links to which are listed below. Thanks for watching and remember to keep writing. Bye.